So geothermal is regional, but the sun is nearly everywhere. Could solar be the answer? REC Solar is the largest residential installer in America. People still don't know much about solar. It's uh, changing, but uh, it's still a relatively new technology, which uh, really came about with having more popularity during the last three, four years. How much of a homeowner's decision to install solar is based on uh, philosophical or passion versus economics? Most uh, decision makers actually go for the economic reason. I would say 80%, 20% environmental reasons. Here in a neighborhood like this, you would get uh, an incentive from the utility, and in addition, you get a federal investment tax credit. Sure. Typically, what a homeowner can achieve here is probably an eight to 10 year payback. The average solar array powers just 0.4 people per year which means it'll take several years for the savings to offset the cost of the panels. Is it 10 to 20 years, 30 years? It depends on what you pay for electricity today. Yeah, it's you know, all relative, if, isn't if it? If you're, you know, in Palo Alto in the middle of the afternoon, your photovoltaic, your photovoltaic, yeah. you know, it's, it's cost effective. Yeah. You know, if you were in Hawaii, you know, where they have a very high cost of electricity, it could sure. be cost effective today. Sure. Uh, on the other hand, if you have coal-based electricity right now, you know, that you're paying, you know, four or five cents a kilowatt hour, it, it may never be, you yeah. know, really competitive. So there's not a simple answer, but in the right place. Yeah. It's, it's, it's here today. Turns out solar, too, is regional. It's affordable where sun, subsidies, and electric prices are high. But where we have all these things, can we turn solar panels into a solar power plant? I went down the road to the Diablo Valley College. Basically, it's a parking lot canopy that okay. provides shaded parking, but there's solar on the rooftops. So the solar produces about 50% of the campus's peak electrical demand. Why in a parking lot? I mean, usually we see these panels up on a roof. What we found is that if you can build a solar parking shade structure in you know, a wide open parking lot that yeah. has lots of available space, you can actually drive the economics down much better than you can on the rooftops. So how does a community college or an educational campus afford the front end cost of something like this? Well, most of them don't have to worry about the upfront cost. The campus would basically enter into a long-term power purchase agreement at a rate that is less than what they're buying from the local utility. So they're getting those savings from day one. And they enter into that agreement with the utility? No, they would enter that into with a financial institution that would actually own the asset. Okay. Okay, so say a bank would own the asset, and then we would design the project, build the project, do the operation and maintenance of it on behalf of the bank, which is selling the power to the campus for, say, 20 years. And that's where the savings get generated. So that's a neat combination of partnerships that are going on there. Yeah, it's a, it's a great example of public-private partnership to benefit the mission of a college campus. With creative financing and in the right places, solar plants are a workable solution. But they're still limited by high price and low output. This one could power just 200 people per year. They're using a different technology to get more out of solar plants in Spain, like at Solacar, which could power 1,200 people per year. We have a huge field of mirrors and they are continuously moving in order to track the sun and to concentrate solar radiation on the top of the tower. And we generate a steam that we drive to the steam turbine in order to generate electricity. The plants are larger and therefore more efficient. The footprint is smaller as well. And as you use the heat to produce energy, the plants have what we call thermal inertia. So they don't go on and off the grid. Uh, with, when the solar resource uh, disappears. So we can provide utilities or grids uh, a more stable production. When we were leaving Solacar, we saw this beautiful image. The light beams were converging right in front of the tower. When you don't have a very good day, mm -hmm. it's sort of cloudy, mm -hmm. what they do is they take out part of the solar field and they put it in what they call the waiting point in front of the receiver. Oh. People always love that. The people who are operating the plant, they don't like it because it's a sign that they are not able to right. produce as much as they could. At 16,000 people per year, 
Honda Soul uses hundreds of mirrored troughs to turn heat into power. Oh, that's very warm. I can feel it here. Yeah. It's like, woo, it's hot. Hey. <laughs> right here? You, you can... Yeah. <laughs> woo. The heat makes steam to turn a generator or is stored in tanks of molten salt to be used later in the day. So you're storing heat not electrons with concentrated solar. Yeah. Storing electricity today uh, is not efficient. There are no known technologies um, cheap enough, let's say. While storing heat is something used in other industries. But on the day I was there, the troughs never swung upward to gather heat. This plant also never got out of the holding position. For the large utility scale solar thermal plants, you know, they have to be in places that have very clear, direct sunshine, not kind of, you know, reflected stuff, mm -hmm. uh, which you can get away with uh, more easily with, with photovoltaics. Obviously, there's a big uh, room for improvement, and we just got started. Uh, technologies are very young. Uh, you are seeing technologies for which there are, in the case of a tower, two towers worldwide. In the case of troughs, a bunch of them uh, worldwide. Uh, so there's a huge path that we will go through uh, in order to reduce uh, the cost of these technologies and improve efficiency. As promising as this technology appears, it's probably decades away from being an affordable solution. We'll need some other alternative to provide large-scale power. 